Absolutely. Pedro from MNP Reacts, I'm here today with, I mean, you don't need any introduction. Everybody knows who Giannis is. is. <laughs> I guess you can still try to introduce, like, <laughs> or try to say the surname, right? <laughs> Some people have trouble with that. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not even going to try. I think I need a lot of oikos in order for me to be able to pull it off. So <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into that. But one of the greatest voices in the world of metal today is here with me, Giannis from Beast and Black. How's it going? All good, man. All good. I'm just taking some easy time at home and you know just trying to adjust to this current new situation. It's getting old nowadays. Like I'm starting to <laughs> have to be honest with you you know i'm starting to lose it because basically there's not any gigs for us nowadays <laughs> there's nothing yeah, the are, are, are you in are you in finland or in greece actually i well i was i'm still kind of keeping it under the radar but i'm i've moved to helsinki since december all right i, I just have to ask you to move more into the center of the screen because so, uh, okay sorry. perfect Otherwise, we're only going to get half of you, and we want to get we're going to get all of you. We don't want to get just just half of Giannis. So you're keeping under the radar. So we're not going to tell anybody. But you you moved to Helsinki. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> just like you said, it. exactly. <laughs> it's going to be hard to keep this under wraps, but uh, we'll do our best. I, I promise I won't tell anybody uh, that, that you moved no back problem. here. Okay. I, I don't know how you're gonna gonna shoo away all the fans and perhaps none other. Uh, I mean, the, the worst fan of them all, Mikel Salo. I don't know how you're gonna keep him away. Wow. You need a restraining wow. order. <laughs> restraining order for Salo. Actually, it would be it would sound funny to you, but like he's really like, uh, especially like if he's sober, like he's really <laughs> that kind of if he's sober. Like he's that kind of Finnish guy that keeps the distance and, you know, you really have to get him in the right mood to hang out with him. You know, it's like, but last time, like basically every time we've uh, encountered, you know, each other, it, it was crazy. Like I, I couldn't hold my bladder from the laughter. It was insane. <laughs> like, seriously, seriously. You can hold your bladder because of all the drinking, but okay, the laughter, that's, that's good too. Yeah, 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 that's insane. Like you can you can feel, you know, what, what what's the word for that, you know? It's pressure? just like it's eating. I'm sorry? Pressure? You can feel the pressure. Yeah, like uh, what's it called when a woman is about to give birth and she feels those hits? Oh, you know? the contractions, contractions. Contractions. Yeah, you feel the contractions to your bladder every time you're laughing, you know, it goes from the diaphragm straight to the bladder. You know, it's oh. like, oh, goodness. Because we have so much in common to talk about and same kind of humor, you know. Sometimes yeah. I'm a bit too southern for him, but still. I, I think you guys are a, a lot alike. The only thing that's really different is the talent. I, uh, I have none. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're killing me. You're absolutely killing me. So with, with no festivals this summer, everything has been canceled, including you guys had your North American tour with Hammerfall. Uh, I'm so disappointed because I was so looking forward to seeing you guys. Uh, it would have been the second summer in the row that I would have seen you guys play in Canada. And uh, with all of this stuff being canceled, like what are your plans for this summer? Like what are, what are you going to do in order to stay busy? Well, the good uh, the good side of this is that you know, our bass player, uh, Mate, and Anton, the guitar player, they had a bet that we would have to have the album ready in June to mix, and uh, the third album. And I have a recording of that. And uh, Mate is like, hell no, Anton, you're not going to make it, because he knows Anton is slow, Anton is really artistic, he really gives the priority to the inspiration and nothing else so he's always messing up deadlines and well it's kind of the same deal as well now like I'm, there's still a couple of lyrics missing for a few songs but he has all the time now to figure that out and uh, it's gonna be at least faster than we were expecting because of the gigs and the festivals so that's a good side of things that at least we can work on the album a bit sooner which we already had to do and uh, 
there, there's a small chance that if there are some kind of festivals in August in Finland, which I, I really am not good with dates, maybe some of them will be done, but I'm not too optimistic for that either. Like, there's a few that haven't been cancelled officially, but uh, I'm not holding my breath for those either. Yeah, because last time when we talk, uh, well, last time I saw you was last summer, August, uh, uh, was it August? No, July, July of last year when you guys were in Montreal at Heavy Montreal. By the way, what a great festival that was. Uh, yes. and, how, and how much fun did we all have at that, at that festival? And, and you were talking already at that time that you already had some songs ready for the new Beast in Black record. So you must have, now you must be a, a lot further ahead. And now with no gigs, this North American tour being canceled, everything being canceled, you guys are going to have a lot more time uh, to get it ready. So are you guys looking at 2021 as the time to release it, or are you going to push it into 2022? Or it's going to depend on, on how this virus goes? That's a very, very, very good question, because uh, every year or every release, it's kind of a circle, you know, kind of a cycle for a band that, you know, you release the album, you tour for the album, and you try to escalate the leagues, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, like for the first album, we did a support tour, and then for most of it, or a few support tours, and for most of those places, next time we visited with the second album, we, we were headlining those places. So it kind of goes on and on, and now that cycle has kind of broken because we don't have any gigs for this year, mm -hmm. and... Uh, you don't want to release a third album and play the exact venues that you played on the second album, if that makes sense. Or yeah, yeah. maybe at least we as a band, we always demand maybe too much from ourselves or, you know, we want to push the boundaries and we want to expand the audience, you know. So in that sense, the normal plan at least has been to release the album in the beginning of uh, the next year. But I don't know how that's going to work out, to be honest with you. Uh, the thing is, uh, if that works out, then we will probably be out on the road in the next year, for sure, and try to somehow make it work. I really don't know. Like, I only talk from our band's perspective, and I really don't want to imagine other band situations where they had to cut the tour in the middle. They had to... Maybe some bands were from Europe and they were touring in America and they had to return right away, catch a flight and uh, take all your equipment the back to Europe. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's a financial disaster and not just for yeah, bands. No, like, so people stay for, homeless, you know. It's, and it's, for it's, you it's, guys to, to come here, to for example, to tour in North America... You have to get the visas ahead of time, all of that kind of stuff. So all of that, there's a cost associated with it. The last thing you want is to get all of that uh, prepared and ready, show up here, tour for like three shows, four shows, and then be forced to, to leave and go home. Like some bands, some bands had to go through that last year. Well, this year. It feels like last yeah. year. Uh, the whole time, I'm, I don't even know what, what year we're on anymore. You know, like it's, it's all a big, uh, just a big mess in my mind. Uh, during this downtime, are you getting any requests for guest vocals on, on people's records? Do you get those kind of requests? Constantly, constantly, to be honest with you. And uh, the last one I did, at least uh, time-wise, was a guest feature for Delane. And uh, like even for that, I was really, really uh, considering because it always creates a misconception. Like, what is this guy doing uh, where is he? And I really don't want to draw any more attention towards other things because I really want to, so to speak, like put my whole focus on that tank that's called Beast in Black. So, uh, and I like just, I don't know, all your big singers are usually also associated with that big band, right? Like you have Halford and you have Judas Priest, you have Dickinson and you have Iron Maid. You know, I, I, I'm, so I'm I, I you like to with you on the same sentence. That's 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 pure genius. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm saying that you put those two with you, all three of you, in the same sentence. So you're putting yourself at the same level as Rob Halford and and Bruce Dickinson. 
Uh, not necessarily, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not necessarily, to be honest. Uh, no, there's a, a lot of things that... I'm just busting your balls. I, I know exactly what you're, I know what you're talking about. I, I understand what you're saying. It, it makes total yeah. sense. You want to you, you don't you want people to know you for the work you've done with that band, not necessarily as the guy who's hopping around and, and, and singing on other people's bands. Of course, because it's like a kind of character. It's kind of a role, you know, but it's kind of more you're more attached to it than just the playing Hollywood roles like. You have some actors being associated like, hey, he's the Batman. But you're, of course, in that uh, in that department, if you're an actor, for example, it's very great, good to get unhooked from the role and just be, I don't know, Christian Bale. Christian Bale is a bright example. He's not just the Batman. He's played huge roles that, mm. yeah, he's also been that. But so anyway, different discussion. Uh, the thing, though, is that, yeah, I would like to keep the focus there and uh, build the name in a parallel kind of way. You know, I don't want to be like cut off like or I don't want to be like a Joker card or a Trump card or what would you call that, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, other acts. And of course, it is kind of a double axe, uh, double edged sword, because I really like doing other kinds of music. And when you're in the same band, well, of course, you still change. A lot of things, but still, it's the same sound, same band. So I really love uh, singing in different ways for other bands, giving another character. But you got to balance those things and you got to see the big picture. And that's what I'm trying to do. And, and I mentioned those big guys because that's how you can become better. You know, I cannot take as example a band that's in the small medium lead you know i will not try to replicate or imitate their actions i'm not gonna follow their trail you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm gonna take example and filter out the good stuff that the big guys have done like for example a big principle at least for me and anton both is also that we would probably never use somebody else's name to feature in the album at least not in any singing you know like uh because nowadays it's kind of been like that, you know, most bands get other feature singers just for the name of it and not for the musical reason for it. Of course, yeah, not yeah, everyone, that, but you know what I mean, right? It's, it's become such a huge business nowadays. It's, it's marketing. You forget. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, so what's music and what's marketing? I cannot tell them apart anymore, you know? I, I kind of can't, but, you know... Most people probably <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean. Like, do, do you uh, do you sometimes scratch your head and see where you guys were when you started off the band and where you guys are now? Like the 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 demand that there is not not just for you but for the band in general. Like you guys have become such a a, a quick. Maybe for me it feels like it's a quick uh, hit, but for you guys it's a lot of work that's gone into it, and 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 you perhaps don't feel like it's been as quick. You feel like you've been working a lot to get where you are but when you look back and you see where you guys were when you started off and where you guys are now just only after two records uh isn't that does it does it amaze you the the exponential growth that the band has had uh, man that is almost rhetorical for me like uh, especially at the start of it i was kind of lost well I, because everyone else basically in the band had a previous touring experience, they had a performance, you know, they have built a character on stage and off stage towards this kind of purpose. And even though I had been in the, in bands before, you know, it's like, uh, I, I cannot explain it. It's like you're in a country where you don't have anything close to the NBA, for example, okay? And then suddenly somebody throws you into the NBA league and you're like, yeah, maybe I have the talent for it or the potential, but what the hell am I supposed to do here? I'm the youngest one. It was a big dive in the deep water at the beginning. But uh, I, maybe I like socially, maybe I have that kind of advantage. I can adapt socially quite fast and that helped, but it still amazes me. Like both the numbers that I see, you know, in views or likes or whatever, Oh, but basically the people's reaction and where they estimate the band, I'm like, really? As you said, and you put it in a very nice way. 
only two records in, and this happens. I really don't know. I really don't know. And I don't, I don't see it with many metal acts nowadays, or I don't no, know. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's very rare. It, it normally takes a lot longer than that for, for a band to start to have this much of a, I don't know, this much of an allure with the fan base. Because I, I was, I'm sure you were shocked at least a little bit when you guys played in Montreal last year at Heavy Montreal. You guys were the second band of the day. The place was packed waiting for you guys. Everybody was singing along. Everybody was chanting Beast in Black, Beast in Black. That, to me, I, I, I was I, I was really happy for you guys. I was honestly, I was really happy for you guys to see that big of a turnout for the second band of the day. Normally, you don't get those crowds until you get later in the day, uh, especially at such a big festival. And to get that and people singing your name and that, that must feel good. And that must validate the work that you guys are doing. To be honest, like, especially when we had to go overseas, basically, for the first time. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I was like, there's no way that anyone gives a damn about what we're doing here. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, I had locked onto that mindset, and I'm not joking. I wasn't just being pessimistic. I was realistically thinking that maybe we will win over some guys that are kind of into this situation. But also, in my head, you know, I had a... I used to be with with Vicky a lot, you know, and I, I knew Heavy Montreal beforehand. And I had that kind of image in my head that maybe hardcore or death or thrash bands would be more successful there in the way that people would be into those kind of bands. So I was like, we're playing this kind of more modern pop power metal thing. Or I don't I cannot put it in a genre anyways. I'm fair. Yeah, I think but, you, uh, you know <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I was truly like not expecting anything. And then even before hitting the stage, I was hearing cr crowd like going crazy, like, yeah, beast in black. And I was like, huh? Excuse me. You know, it, so I really cannot every time I estimate something, I I'm usually wrong. And I, I, I cannot know the true extent of this thing because somehow something about this has been a bit more old school. Like we really haven't pushed the social media a lot or we haven't uh, marketed these things, at least to my knowledge. Maybe there is stuff going on in the background that I'm clueless about. But at least to my knowledge, that's the way it has been. And I'm like, so how is this happening? I feel like there is either radio time or which there is at least in finland gotta be honest no, no, not in montreal not here so no radio yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh or maybe just youtube has also worked uh, to our benefit a lot but other than that i don't know what's the deal like to be <laughs> honest I have... the crowd is crazy. i'm just going with it <laughs> Yeah, that show was the crowd was crazy. the The festival was amazing, and and hanging out with you and and the guys after the show, and watching some of the other bands, uh, and hanging out with the guys and Vicky from the Agonist was was such a great experience, such a great day. Oh, and, and and how much I miss that now that we can't go to any freaking live shows. Truly, like I, I was know. watching videos a couple of days ago, like uh, being on the stage, and I had my stage clothes and all that i'm like who's this guy is that me like it felt so unfamiliar already and it's only been five or six months without gigs i'm like how am i supposed to do this again it feels like already a bit boring you're gonna have to hit the gym to get ready for when the next tour hits because you're gonna be so out of shape you're gonna show up with this big stomach you know like you you've gained like 50 pounds don't long remind hair, me long hair you're, I, that's the only thing you said that's far from the possible truth. But the other stuff, like, I am truly at my worst physical shape right now. At least my vocal shape is pretty good. I keep recording stuff at home all the time, which is good. But uh, at least the gym is open and it's 24-7. It's like five minutes of walk, but I just haven't found the courage. Well, you can go to Salvo. He, he has his own gym now. It's an outdoor gym. So you can go to his gym. Uh, if I went there, I would just go there to bust his balls. But like, 
Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, would get no work out. Yeah, you would get no work out then. Last time you were in Montreal, I have to take back to this because you haven't followed through on this promise. We talked about you doing a Slayer cover. Where, where is, the, where is our Slayer cover? <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like a joke right now. I feel like a clown because most of the stuff I've done, like since I moved here, it almost none of it has anything to do with metal. Like, not even remotely. And it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, finally, I'm getting some free time. Finally, I don't have to scream my balls off. You know, so it's like, ah, let the voice be in a resting nice place. You know, so going to those cotton clouds that you were talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just... yeah. That, that's a nice yeah, place, but, for you. Uh, place for you. At least I bought, uh, I bought an acoustic guitar. So that would be at least a little bit more possible, but I would still have to figure out what was it? Was it Angel of Death? Or no, uh, we talked about Dead Skin Mask. I thought I thought Dead Skin Mask would be, uh, uh, would be better because you could uh, you, you could make some changes to it. it. Has a little bit of a slower tempo to it, so perhaps it would work better than I think Angel of Death would be really tough. Really tough. Acoustic, yeah, you would have to compose a new song and just <laughs> yeah, the lyrics. It would have to be a whole new song for the same lyrics. It, would, it wouldn't work. And, and it's been, I, I checked this before our, our chat today. It's been one year since you did the Ghost Love Score video, uh, the cover. And it has over one million views. Did you expect, th that song blew up. And you know that. That song, absolutely, everybody was talking about it. Uh, it, it was just such a massive thing that you did. When, when you decided to record it, even before you published it, did you think it was going to be as big as it turned out to be? I, I was almost not willing to post it because most of the takes I've done in that song, well, basically, no, the whole recording was basically done in 2017 or end of 16 or something like that. And, uh, but, you know, because you do some certain takes with some certain room and microphone and everything. And I was like, yeah, it's still good, but uh, I was really not sure, and I didn't want to do too many new takes because I, I didn't want to change the mix. Like, I go crazy in the mixing changes. I will change 0 0.01 decibels. Like, that doesn't make any sense to anyone, even to me, but I just do those changes. So even if I changed one syllable, then I would mix that syllable. Like, and we're talking like, no, you should just throw it there and do it like that's, and that's still normal. So for those reasons, I was like, ah, should I? <laughs> let's, see, let's, let's give it our, our best and see what happens. But I was really like, had no, no idea, no idea. And like, it might still sound funny, but like, it is way worse in a way worse, at least for me, if if I had to record it now, you know, like so many things I, I would have changed, you know, but it always goes like that. So you could do the same song for 20 years and you would never be happy. So there's no point. Just do more songs instead. <laughs> <laughs> Just do new stuff. Like why, why keep re-recording the same thing over and over again? Because I have a feeling like you're the kind of guy that's just never going to be happy anyways. You always want to find something down the road that oh man looking back i could have done this differently so if you if, yeah. you, have that, if you have that way of thinking you, you you're just going to drive yourself crazy might as well just put that energy towards new songs yeah yeah exactly and uh, like i've acknowledged that i've accepted that i've embraced that concept because i actually see some people seeing it through they're like yeah i did this song five years ago and let's see what i can do with it again now leave it be man it's okay that was you that is still you five years ago, but that's you. And it has the beauty of it. And like, for example, if you ask me to do anything I've done and you've seen on YouTube from me, from my bands, from whatever, there is no way I can replicate that. Maybe I can do it different, maybe better, some parts worse. So it has its beauty. It has its character. If so, it, it's there's really no, no reason to touch that stuff just keep keep going keep going and you will put that element that you want 
that improved version of yourself, you will put it in the next song. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. It's fine. Have, but have, yeah. Have, do you put a lot of, you put a, I feel like you put a lot of work into these covers. Is that one of the reasons why you, you, don't, you don't do them as often? Because you're a perfectionist, so you want to make sure it has a certain level of quality. Because now people expect from you a certain level of quality, right? So it's not like you can put yourself there singing in the shower. And I, I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. People would still watch it, but uh, but you you wouldn't be happy with it. Exactly. Like I think you put it perfectly because, like, and I have a lot of material just standing there. Like it's ready. It's mixed. It's fine. I'm just like, uh, but is this good enough, or is this suitable enough, or is it something that I would ask as a listener from this guy? Because maybe maybe I can make the song somehow fit my voice, or maybe I can adapt, maybe I can give some new elements to it. But is it something that I want to listen over and over as a listener? You know, so usually that kind of criteria makes me put it or not put it out there. And finally, like I also found a guy recently here in Finland. And we seem to have a very good workflow together. And finally, I could film two songs last weekend. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we know it's not Slayer. We know it's not Slayer, but it's and and both of them actually are not metal. But I think I will put one out there in a few days. I think within this month. But maybe I will put a pause to the other one because maybe I would want to put some something from the metal scene in between. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, maybe yeah, there's that, kind that, of that Slayer song. Either that, or or by the way, did you get a chance to see the cover that uh, Puddle of Mud did of of Nirvana about a girl? From everything you've said, I only basically understood Nirvana. Like okay. I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> like uh, the, what the, you're band, talking about. The, the the band Puddle of Mud. They did a, a live recording of, of an acoustic uh, version of about a girl from Nirvana. Did, did you have you seen that that cover that video? Okay, good for you. Like I'm, probably I've been living under a rock because, like, well, basically I have barely posted anything, and I feel like uh, I, I know that people the, are not even gonna give a damn. You no, know, that's like one of the reasons I, I, uh, I, I reached out to you was because we haven't heard from you in such a long time. I was like, okay, one, let me find out if he's still alive. Two, let, let me find out if he's still singing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and three, yeah. what's going on with his life? Like, is, is this guy, like, so scared of the virus that he's moved into, like, I don't know, Siberia or something? Like, I don't know what's going on. So th I that's love that. I love <laughs> It's really, it's really funny because it's kind of the truth. Like there was one time that I had this small crisis, like one or two years ago, and I posted something like, "Hey guys, I'll be away from Facebook for a while." And everyone's reaction, like, it didn't have likes, it didn't have hearts, it didn't have the surprised emoji. Most of it was the crying <laughs> reaction, and all the comments were were like, "Is everything okay? Are you fine?" Uh, did something happen? Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I hope you're gonna be all right. Like people were mourning, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm just doing a goddamn detox, and like now, do I have to feel bad about like leaving this world or something? Because like, the world is not on the goddamn phone, or you know. I, I was just gonna so, say, you know, look at the bright side. Look at the bright side. Uh, with all these shows and all these tours getting canceled, nobody's calling you and asking you for free tickets. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm fine if somebody I have even talked to once does that. But there are some people that just open up the conversation, like you don't even know them, and the message probably goes to. To your message request or to your uh, uh, junk or whatever you call that and they're like with terrible english or with capital letters or something <laughs> hey you are a great singer put me and my wife on the guest list <laughs> not please <laughs> not not asking with a question mark could you please consider or do you have a spot no 
put me and my wife on the guest list. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason I brought it up is because I saw once on Facebook you posted something about that. Like people, like people who you don't know, like just asking you for 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 to be on the guest list. I, I thought it was hilarious because I think a, a lot of people in your shoes, a lot of artists get bombarded with those kind of requests. But not everybody is vocal about it. Not everybody talks about it. And I, and I think it's. It, I, I thought it was so genuine of you to just say like, stop with this bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I, know who you are. Was it me? I don't remember actually this. Was it me? Are you sure? I, I'm, I'm, well, now, now I'm wondering if it was you, but I'm almost sure it was you. I mean, there's not many Yanis Papadopoulos out there, so I'm almost sure it was you. So I'm not There right. is one that plays guitar for the guy of Creed that used to be in Creed. What, what is his name? Uh, Trust me, yeah, I, don't listen, I don't listen to Creed. Something. Me neither. Me neither. But he is also from, well, he's from Athens and he only writes one letter of his name differently because well it's greek so you can do it whatever in english so he's also Yanis papadopoulos and he's one of the best guitar players actually in existence but uh he I plays with scott, 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 scott Stapp. yeah I, I think it was you i'm not sure now now you have now i'm gonna have to go back to your facebook page and look for that damn thing just to make sure it was you but either way let's 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 not let the truth get in the way of a good story we'll just go with what yes. it was you yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, if I really became vocal, as you say, about uh, things that bother me, like with people or whatever, like I would have to make a book. Like I seriously would need a book to make a book. And I, I, at one point, I somehow will need to get this out. And I mean, I don't want to just talk. You know, like I don't know. Maybe it could be a book, or maybe it could be a song or something, or an album. I don't know, but. Uh, I have to somehow let it boil down to the brain in a kind of more creative way. I have to. I mean, I feel like. That. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I can I can I can see that happening. Uh, are, are, do people recognize you when you're walking around in Helsinki or, or even in Greece? Do, do people come up to you and, and, and ask you, hey, man, are you, are you the lead singer from Beast and Black or, 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 or no? More in Helsinki than Greece, to be honest. Like, uh, in Greece, it would happen if I was doing the Greek scene, if I was doing the, the Greek clubs uh, with a Greek regular traditional music like Bozokia, stuff like that. But uh, like if I was a Greek pop star or something, well, of course, then. but not so much in Greece. And the metal community is kind of like small in my city, especially that, well, it's a pretty much limited edition like people might already know you so there's not that many new people walking up to you but uh it in finland it has happened in the most obscure situations like really i was in some other city for one day randomly with a friend and i was just doing some groceries in a market and then a guy like 65 years old comes talks to me and he's like and he tells me something that I don't remember exactly what he says, but I'm questioning, like, is he thinking the right guy in his head? So I'm asking a question to clarify. And he's like, yes, yes. So, so you sing in Beast in Black. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, that's me. <laughs> very, very good voice. I'm like, ah, kiitos, like, thanks, and finish. But it's it's really interesting. and. It's what's funny is that the metal guy in Greece, for example, will have a certain metal attitude. They will be like, chill. They will be like, hey, man, how are you doing? Huh? All good, huh? All good. Huh? Okay, let's drink some coffee. Let's chill, you know? Because they're metal heads and it's clear. With Finnish people, you can never know if that person talking to you listens to metal or how the hell does he know me? He doesn't look like into this stuff. They I talk this kind 100%. of faint, like respectful way, like, how are you doing? Hey, it's really nice that you are in our city. And it's our, like, some people go crazy, like, hey, it's our privilege that you're here. And so, I'm like, I'm not the president. Who are you talking to, even? And they're like, so, like, polite yeah, I, and which is great, though. It's great. Yeah, that, that, that was one of the things we noticed last summer when we were in, in, in Finland. 
uh, I mean, we're we're not rock stars and and we're not famous by any means, but we we were in Kotka and we were uh, having breakfast, and and some older gentleman came up to us to the table and says, you know, uh, I, I and he just said, you know, I love watching your videos on YouTube, especially the ones from Nightwish, and it was like in a place that, first of all, he didn't look like he listened to that kind of music. And it was just at a, at a little coffee shop. Like, you're not expecting that. It's, it's not in that environment. You know what I mean? I was blown away. But everybody's so um, nice and so so happy, specifically when they feel like you you have respect for, for their country and for the city that they're from and the bands that come from that town. They, they really appreciate that. And one thing I must say about people in Finland in general is that there's no bullshit. If people like you and they're your friends, they're really your friends and they really like you. No, nobody's yeah. doing you any favors. You know what I mean? Like, and that honesty is something that I really, really appreciate. When people say, come over to my house for coffee, they really mean come over to my house for coffee. You know what I mean? They're not just saying that just to make conversation, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know yeah. about Greece, but growing up in Portugal, there's a lot of bullshit. And, and when people say come over for coffee, right. they don't really mean come over for coffee. They're just kind of like, yeah, you know, whatever. They're being nice. They're being diplomatic or exactly. like... That's the typical Greek thing. Like you haven't seen somebody for five, six years, and well, there is a reason for that, right? It's not just bad luck. That hey, we haven't seen each other for five years. Did a bomb fall into our country or between our houses? No, it's just you know things. One thing brings the other. So you bump into them onto the street and oh, man, how are you doing? The hug thing. Sure, that's great, great. I love it. I'm not. I haven't become that finished yet. But they're like, hey, we, we should go for a coffee sometime. <laughs> it's not next week. It's not next uh, weekend. It's not February. No, it's like sometime. And it stays there. It's the eternal coffee, as I call it. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, definitely. I'm like, I don't want to waste my saliva. And I don't want you to waste your saliva or my time or your time. So I'm like, you know, don't you don't need to say something to sound nice. There's no reason for that. You know, it's it's fine. It's it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree. Life is too short. There's no time for bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not. I I don't realistically consider myself old, but getting older every year, I'm like, I have less and less time for that mentally. Basically, I'm, I'm just like, you know. I don't even care if you like me. You know what I mean? I like I don't I don't want to say nice things to make you like me. I want to say what I say. And if you like me, that's good. Then we can coexist, you know? <laughs> but but if you don't like me, I won't be sad because I've still been myself. Like I've done my part good or mm -hmm. I did my part as I felt like doing it. So I'm I fine with that. Man. Some people are really puzzled by my behavior because sometimes I might sound too forward or even cocky or arrogant, and it's not that. Or I might sound like a, I want to try to tell them something that I think is it's that way, and they will take it personally, like I'm attacking them or something. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to make a personal remark. I don't want to make a personal attack. I'm just telling you what I think and well if that offends you then it that's is your problem is. because I don't mean it that way yeah yeah I agree you uh, I, I have one <laughs> last thing to, to ask you about the, one of the last Anything. messages one of the last messages that I received from you uh, was a picture of you dipping uh, pizza into yogurt and, and I think honestly that is the last message that I have from you is a picture of pizza and yogurt uh, you're teasing me, and is that madness or pure genius? According to my experience, uh, because I have to sincerely tell you that even people who thought it's gross, not even crazy, but gross, I'm like, please, give it a shot and call me mad afterwards, not beforehand. So usually it goes like that. It's it's uh, it's like trying. Uh, it's like girls try anal for the first time. First, it's like oh, I'm not sure about this. Oh, oh maybe. Oh, 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 God, I love it. It goes, you know. Long story short, it goes like that. They try the first thing. I'm I'm like, 
please take a bite and then take a spoonful. Okay, let's do it. First time it's like, ah, yeah, it makes sense. And especially if the pizza is spicy, you know, that's where it truly makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like you do it again and then you feel the yogurt taking away the saltiness, taking off the burn. It's like you burn and then you have the relief with the yogurt. You, you really cannot beat that easily. What And one thing that I can be proud as a Greek is that we really pay attention to variety for pizza, for coffee, for pita gyros, you know, like mm -hmm. a kebab thing, you the would call it a barat, you know. For example, we had a lot of pizza places, you know, I'm a pizza place, I know my customer, I know that the customer throws the crust away most of the time, right? Like a lot of people throw the crust and they just keep the meaty side of the pizza. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make the crust interesting. They fill the whole crust from the inside with Philadelphia cheese. Madness. Mm -mm. Genius. That was like... <laughs> that was like a, a fucking orgasmic, I have to tell you. I don't know if you want to put a beep to that. Like, no, no, there's no beeping here. There's no beeping. <laughs> awesome. No censorship. So, yeah. Wow. It is crazy. So that you can realize that there's better options than the mainstream fancy options. Like it is out of the box to put pineapple. Well, not anymore. Or some. Like I have a friend who puts, she puts shrimp and pineapple onto her pizza. The pineapple, I'm all for it. I love pineapple on the pizza, especially if you put some meat. Like the we call it Hawaiian, but the the shrimp, I've yeah. never had shrimp on the pizza. And both of them together, like I know, that's kind at of least weird. put either, but not both. I'm like, ah, what's going on? Oh, so I cannot. Nah. You, but you, I wouldn't call myself just. a pizza eater. I think I would go mostly to the kebab or to the hero's side, basically. Maybe burgers after that. And then pizza comes third. <laughs> on, on the list of hangover food, pizza is third. I have to tell you, I don't get hungovers. Oh. I, I genuinely don't. I don't. And I have to be honest, I did one kind of live stream thingy. with Some people were, some friends here were doing a DJ thing and they were streaming it on Twi Twitch. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you didn't know anything about that night because some people feel in Finland at least watched it. And I was like, well... I've been quarantining myself for so long that I will fucking do it because it's going to be a fun night. So we go to their studio and the whole bet was a puke challenge. So in a sense, I kind of won that challenge because I didn't puke first. Like there was this big guy. He was he's almost two meters and he's like big, you know, I was like, I'm going to make you puke first. <laughs> It was crazy. Like people were paying us to drink shots, and uh, like they were putting money on the Twitch. Or I don't know how that goes. Well, I just went there for the fun of it. I didn't get well, a penny, but that doesn't matter. And uh, there were shots coming all the way, and I had a, a few uh, ciders just to drink as water, just to replenish myself somehow. So, needless to say, how drunk? Like I've never been this drunk. In my life, I haven't been drunk more than two times or three anyway. And uh, like suddenly I had to sit down and suddenly I was puking my soul out. Just from one moment to another. And it, that was ongoing for a couple of hours. I was just like retching all the time. It was... <sighs> but the miracle is that after I emptied everything out and I finally hit my bed... I wake up the next day and I've slept like a bird. I'm like, fresh, good as new. No, no hangovers for sure. It's like I took the evil out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Uh, well, you yeah. Thank you very much for your time today, man. This was an absolute pleasure. I, I mean, talking to you during this quarantine is making it's making this quarantine at least bearable. At least bearable. So thank you very much for your time today. It was an it's, absolute pleasure. Anytime. Like it, it's really, I feel like, you know, well, you've seen my videos. I've seen your videos. <laughs> I feel like 
like we we know each other for much longer than we actually do and i feel like we know each other basically which you know that's yeah, crazy it's, always, it's always very nice chatting with you it's always a pleasure and uh and like i said stay healthy stay safe and and thanks for taking the time today really appreciate it no problem no problem of course absolutely